Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Juana and I am the Crafty Puerto Rican. If you are new, welcome. So today I decided to go very basic. Um, I need to do some samples uh, for my Etsy job. I need to embroider some onesies. So I decided to get one of those samples and make it on the Etsy 1900. Um, this is a dual machine. It has embroidery and regular um, sewing. It is a brother. And um, I thought that maybe there's somebody out there that are thinking I'm getting into embroidery or bought a machine and it's still in the box and haven't unboxed it yet or has some question on how to hoop a um, one So I'm gonna go step by step. I'm gonna go very simple, very basic as much as I can. Uh, I am not gonna include the part of uh, a software, like if you have a brilliance or another software on how to manipulate the size and stuff like that, because I have included that in uh, previous um, videos that I have shown you. Um, so also you don't need a software to embroider right away. Um, you can just download the file from um, the downloads to a USB and then from the USB to the machine, um, plug it into the USB port. That's how I did it in the beginning. I bought Embrillas later on. So you don't need necessarily to have a software right away. It's very convenient because it gets you to manipulate the design the way you want it, edit it, uh, uh, names, numbers, or whatever design that you want. Either you can either work with two files at the same time. But today I'm gonna make it very basic, okay? So if you are new to the channel, um, this channel is all about all kind of crafting and today we're gonna do embroidery. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing is explaining you all the things that we need to do this um, hoopie. So uh, let's get started. So these are the things that I'm gonna be using. First, of course, we're gonna be using the uh, onesie and I'm using a um, onesie and um, the brand is um, Gerber. Um, this is a uh, three, to six months, of course, the design that we're gonna be using. And also we're gonna use the thread. This only have three colors um, um, thread. I'm gonna need a pencil, some tape. I'm gonna be using throwaway stabilizer. And also I'm gonna use it together with poly mesh fusible cutaway stabilizer. And this one is gonna be iron to the garment. And the throwaway stabilizer is the one that I'm gonna be using with the hoop. In this case, this onesie fabric is very thin, and you can use regular cutaway if your fabric you think is thick enough to um, handle a cutaway. Because this is a small baby, it's an infant, I rather to have a softer feel to it. So I'm going to be using the fusible polymesh stabilizer for it, and then I'm going to hoop the regular um, tearaway. And we're going to be using a spray to adhere it to the hoop, okay? So I'm going to explain you how it's done. Let me show you the spray that I, um, I'm going to be using because I forgot to bring it with me. So we're going to be using, uh, I use 505, but you can use any temporary adhesive um, fabric um, spray. Um, I also use the Walmart brand. I don't remember the, it's not a Walmart brand, but they sell it in Walmart. I haven't seen it in a while. That one is very good. Also, um, anything that says temporary adhesive. This spray is temporary, so it just works out as you go. It's not, it's not a permanent thing, okay? It just um, help you on the hooping process. Um, also, I'm going to be using um, my scissors. Uh, there are several types of scissors that I use. My favorite is this pinky one when it comes to um, coating all the uh, embroidery behind the garment. Once I'm done, this is um, also good to coat around because you can reach a little bit further, especially when you're doing uh, appliques. Um, and this is another one that I use. This one I always use to cut in all, you've seen him using in other videos. I use it to call the um, um, cutaway um, stabilizer once I'm done with the embroidery. And these pinky sometimes are good to cut the thread while you're done. Not for the garment, for when you're um, threading the machine, you just cut the thread with these pinkies. And I use these little dots um, to mark um, the height of the shirt uh, when I start um, placing on the hoop because it helps me know exactly where I want the garment to start from the top and I'm centering the garment. And I got these things on the dollar store. Um, sometimes they adhere to the fabric, sometimes they don't, but for the most part it works. Also, we're going to be needing some um, straight pins because once you hoop the garment, um, 
you need to make sure that the garment don't move and because we are floating the garment that's what i'm going to show you how to do we need to secure it also with pins so that the garment don't move and the way you do it is you spin it to the um, stabilizer on the back so i'm going to show you all these things and i think that is all i need um i'm going to be using these thingies i don't know the name of it um these are you use it to hug uh, huggers you put it on the spool to hold the thread but in this case I'm going to see if I can use it to hold the ones on the top once I roll it and do the process. I will show you that. Um, otherwise, I also can use um, painter's tape to do that. Uh, and, I'm, and you're going to say painter's tape? Yeah, you'll see why I'm going to be using if I need it, okay? So those are the things that I need. And of course, the embroidery machine, which I showed you earlier. So I'm going to start with the process of hooping, okay? So the first thing I'm going to be doing is um, hoop the um, stabilizer. In this case, it's the cutaway, all right? I'm going to cut it to size, all right? So what I'm going to be doing is cutting this to size. So you're going to place the... Um, Stabilizer, in this case, a cutaway on top. Make sure that this piece is on this side of the machine because it's on your left hand. That's the way you hook it to the machine. Each machine is different. Some machines you hook it on the right side, so it all depends on the single needle machine that you have. All right. In this case, it's a five by seven. Your machine might be a little bit um, a bigger hoop if you're gonna do something that is not a one the hooping is the same thing for everything on this single needle machine. All right hook in here and I'm gonna tighten it make sure that it's nice and tight all right the machine does come with a screwdriver so you see this template comes with the um, hoop and this is what's gonna help you to um, making marks so that you know exactly where do you want your um to, the one situate all right so in this case i'm going to be using a pencil to mark it so at this point the most important marks are the top and the middle all right because you want to make sure that your ones is going to lay where you want it all right Make the marking before you spray, all right? There we go. So that's all my markings. And um, at this point, um, I want to make sure that um, that is in place. So usually uh, for baby onesies, you want a height of two fingers down for the next one to two fingers. That, that usually applies for infants and children and um, small children, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the one set is inside out. Once the one set is inside out, then I'm gonna do the uh, marking for the height of the uh, placement on the neck, the neck area, all right? So it needs to be like this. Because remember, you're going to embroider. You'll see when I do it. So, so once you have the one C um, inside out, um, you're going to go ahead and cut the piece of fusible um, stabilizer. And then we're going to be ironing into the um, one C. It doesn't have to be big. You just want to make sure that it covers where the um, design is. Because then you can um, cut it smaller once you finish embroidering. You can trim it out. I just want to make sure that it covers the area that I'm going to embroider. Remember, this is going to be floated with, floated with the garment. It's not going to be part of the hooping. So this is the mini iron that I use. Um, I'm just waiting for it to warm up. 
and guess what i found the pin i'm gonna see if it still works it has i haven't used it in a while as opposed to just a little sticker so i'm gonna go ahead and see if it works because i want to position my two fingers down i just need a little a little dot don't need a lot let me mark it that's all i need this when you iron it disappears So I, I want the design to be below that dot right there. So I think this one enough. Yeah. So I'm going to iron this. Is this design of this design? So this is too big enough. I'm going to cut a little bit more. I don't need all this. Just trim it a little bit. So you iron on the rough, the rough part goes down and the soft part goes to the top. That's how you iron this um, fusible. And it doesn't take too much heat. As soon as you start ironing, it just sticks to the fabric. And that's it. It's done. All right. And this is done. This is all I need. I don't need. I don't need that stuff because once the embroidery is here, then you're gonna trim it around. So, you know, and it's going to be on the fabric anyway. It's not permanent either that much. Okay. This is too hot. These little mini irons, people, they are so good. I mean, I've had those now for, what, two years almost? And they really, 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 really are. Right. They're good. I got it both at Walmart, two of them at Walmart. All right. This is like this. And now what we're going to be doing, this is smart. I'm going to place it here. I'm going to float it, but it's called floating. I'm going to spray it. I sprayed it earlier, but I'm sure it's already dried up. All right. You don't need a lot of spray. I put it away from me because I don't want to bleed in the thing. And this is the center. So I'm going to fold this in half, you know, with from the dot all the way down here. I use the middle snap to, uh, you know, guide me from the middle also. And then you're going to float it and you're going to stick it in there. Remember, the garment is inside out. I'm making sure that I have the seams together to make sure that that's the real center. Okay? The actual middle of the garment, center of the garment. And I'm going to just use this dust and I'm going to line it up on this dust. I've, I have videos showing how to do this. You can go back also and review those videos. And I want to make sure that the dot is not in here. Is the way because I'm not going to embroider here. I'm going to start embroidering lower. So make sure that this is away from here. In the middle dots. This is what I draw or circle with the pencil. That's when I'm lining my garment in the middle. Right? See? You see the notch in here and the notch in here? That's the middle right there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to open it up and flatten it inside. Make sure that it's nice and flat. All right? This, the part of the infusible, or the fusible, um, infusible, I keep saying infusible, fusible stabilizer, you don't have to do it if your garment is a little bit thicker. You just use regular cutaway. For for all my uh, other embroidery, for the most part, I use regular cutaway. I don't use fusible. Um, I use a fusible when the, the garment is thin, and I don't want it to show through the uh, embroidery, right? And you know these Gerber ones, these are kind of thin. But they're comfortable for the baby. That's why people, well, for the most part, like them, because they are very thin and comf comfy for the baby. So... Okay, so now I'm going to do, I'm going to use the straight pins of this fabric. 
Then I'll stretch it up. So clear the area as much as we can. Actually, I can afford to put this pin higher. Put this higher. It will allow me to pull even better. So this is how you're gonna embroider, all right? You're gonna, you have to literally hold this away from the center. Okay. This is how you're gonna manipulate checking this out this is the middle this is the middle this is the middle so I can afford to move this a little bit higher state to help you uh, in the garden. Now make sure that when you use the painter tape, don't put it on the embroidery field, okay? You don't want to embroider on top of it. This is good too. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is take it to the embroidery machine and I'll see you over there, okay? So now we're gonna be doing the hooping and all you're gonna do is just place the um, hoop under here. Make sure the machine is away from the wall always when you're working with hoop because um, you wanna make sure that it's not gonna hit the wall back there, okay? I always make sure, I always keep it away from just in case. So I'm just gonna hook, and you know how the hooping goes, all right? Um, you just go through this little um, notch in here, you're gonna push the hook down. I have a video with all details on how to do this. And it clicks in there, okay? So, um, yeah. I'm gonna thread the machine. Each machine is different. You might not have this machine, you might have another one, and it has a different path. Um, to thread the machine and making sure that this fabric is away from here. I'm gonna put another one of these pins in here, these little hoppers. I want to make sure. I might be able to get another one in here. Let me see. Nah, it doesn't fit. Anyway, so this is a way. Like I said, you're gonna be here, you're gonna be holding this while, while the machine embroidery, so you know. Okay, so um, I um, use this um, stand in here to do my, um, to use with my thread. I don't use the machine one. 
this one works and everything but i think i find it a little bit simpler to do this and i don't have to be dealing with um every time i do a change to be dealing with the disc or in and out in and out to change but if you don't have this this works perfectly in my machine the s rather sc 1900 I use this USB um, port extender, all right, just, just so that I don't have to be going in and out, in and out. And then I put my USB in here, okay? Clearance. I took off the hook because I forgot that once you start, this is gonna move. I don't. You can leave it there. I prefer not to leave it there. That's just me, but you know, that's just me. Okay. So we're gonna look for the design. I'm gonna go here to the USB here. Push this. So I'm gonna. Uh, look for the design now. Now that everything, my USB port is there, I'm going to look for the design. So this is the design right here, and I'm going to switch it to um, this one right here. I'm going to set it, because that's the one I want, and that's the design that we're working on, okay? So now what I'm going to do now is center the design. I'm going to go to edit, um, and I'm going to be moving the design, okay? And when I mean moving the design, I mean moving the hook to the center using the ingredients printout that I have. Let's speed this go a little bit more to the right. pretty good i would like a little bit higher but that's the highest the machine is gonna allow me to do it to um play it around but it looks pretty good in here it's much better so now what i'm gonna do is tracing So, we have everything. All we have to do now is say OK, and then um, I'm going to do embroidery right in the screen. Let me see. I'm going to do embroidery, and it's going to give me the colors. And the first one is the purple, which I already um, um, threaded the machine. Like I said, the design is only three colors. So let's start the embroidery. I'm going to take off this because I don't need it anymore. And that was my pointer. I dropped. So let's get started.
running out of charge and I needed to connect my camera to the charger. So um, I finished with the pink thread and now we're going to be switching to the brass color thread for the stars. So I already placed the next color thread and we're going to be starting it. Okay, so we're, not, we're gonna press okay, done. I'm gonna lift up the foot of the machine. It's kind of tricky to take it out here because I have the uh, hoggers on the top so I cannot slide it up. Because of this I have to go sideways. So I'm gonna clean this up, all right? And then I'm gonna bring you in once it's clean and then we're gonna place the um, cloud cover. Um, and I will place it once I clean in the back, take off the tear away, and then I'm gonna show you that step. Um, it's the same thing as um, Tender Touch, but um, work amazingly and it's probably about the half of the price of Tender Touch. Okay, so I'm gonna bring you in. I'm gonna turn off the machine, okay? It's off. And that's it. So this is the result, um, it looks pretty nice, cute, um, it's a little bit lower than I would have preferred, um, I would have preferred at least to start in here, I, this is the dot, what I got, it should have started here, um, but you know, in order for you, uh, you to do that, if, when you do it, try to put the dot that you mark a little bit lower on the hook, but other than that, it's okay, so I'm going to um, turn it inside out and I'm gonna place the um, the cover the cloud cover is the brand of the um, piece of uh, material that I place in the back to make it nice and soft for baby okay and cover all these dishes um, some people use like I mentioned before um, tender touch but I don't 
I have never invested on it. I think once it was so expensive, it's not worth it. And this does the same thing, and it feels exactly the same. So. So I'm gonna be using my nine by 10 uh, Cricut. Um, it's perfect for this job. I could have been using my big um, heat press, but there's no reason to fire up the heat press for such a, a small garment that it takes only minutes to press. So for this kind of work like this, I use always my Cricut presses. I have two, this one and the one of my nine also. So I leave it for about, I would say maybe 30 seconds to a minute. All depends on the material. Here is so thin, I'm just gonna start with 30 seconds first. At 310, and let's see. And I press down real hard. After I'm done with this, I'm gonna show you a sample that I did of another one uh, a while ago. The one on the side is the uh, same design, but made for um, baby boys. And I had a video that included this one, uh, and I did this video a while ago, you can check it out. Um, it was done a little bit different. And if you notice, it has a size snaps. This one is for a um, little girl. You guys, so this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. So this is the end result. And this is one that I did a while ago. I do have a video on how I did this one. This is the boy version, such a big um, miracle in such a little boy and this is the girl version I um, used this time the snap um, side closure and on that video I um, used the um, magnetic hook for single needle machine so I go through the whole explanation on how to embroider with that magnetic hook um, it's a 5 by 7 size um, now you can get magnetic hook for the single needle machine on the 12 by five reposition on hook also. So yeah, so these are the two. This is the one that I did today and this one is the one that I've done a while ago. I love this color and the blue. Um, and the idea of the size nap because you know, it's easy to um, dress the baby. So yeah, thank you very much for um, being with me on this tutorial. If you're new to my channel and you like crafting, so you're subscribing to my channel, The Crafty Puerto Rican. Um, you guys don't forget to click the thumb up uh, when you click the thumb up, um, it helps my channel to be uh, more visible in YouTube. And also the notification bell, very important. It will notify you of all my future um, videos. So thank you very much for spending this time with me. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hasta luego.